All right, guys. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about Texas is diamond in the rough, a guy who is seemingly always overlooked for throughout the entirety of his career and a guy who I think has a chance to break out to the point in which he becomes more or less a household name very, very soon in college football. Uh, that guy is the, the man you're looking at right here, Troy O'Meary. The six foot three and a half, 205 pound receiver uh, from the 2020 class, right? You know, he's, he's, he hails from Fort Bend, Austin, down there in Sugarland, Texas. So Houston native. And this guy just kind of caught my eye. So uh, a lot of times what I do is I'm just one of those weird people. I go back and look at previous recruiting classes and just, you know, try to find guys that I might have forgotten about or that just kind of slipped through the cracks somewhere along the way that either didn't pan out the way they were supposed to or got injured or transferred or whatever. So today I just kind of went back. I wanted to go back and look at Troy O'Meary's, uh, his huddle film from from his days in high school, right? Because that's really the only game film that we got, aside from a few practice clips from last season. So uh, a lot of you guys probably remember him starting to gain steam in, you know, in camp, right? Until he tore his ACL. Leading up to the season, um, a guy that was expected to sort of kind of come in who a lot of people didn't really understand or, or expect and kind of get some challenge for some playing time right away. Right. Well, so that it gets, it's just kind of peculiar to me. This is the, the conclusion I've drawn after I just kind of went back and watched. I'm like, why is this guy, why is he just ranked so low? How there's, there's no way, there's no way that there's 240 players better than him in his class in 2020. Right. So he's, he's almost like he's, he's overlooked at, at the time, like before he even got to campus. Right. So I, I remember last year reading an article at one point, I think somebody uh, from 247 Sports called him. You know, they said that he reminded them of Calvin Johnson, just the way that he looked and the way that he kind of his play style, right? His, the way he came in and out of his breaks and just attacked the football with, with just such length, but just also speed and explosiveness. Um, it, it's, I kind of see where somebody would get that, right? Obviously we're comparing a college freshman to a hall of famer, but you, but here's the thing. I think I'm sitting here watching this guy's, this guy's tape and you guys are seeing some clips here too. And I'm thinking, you know, I already talked about there's no there's no way there's 240 people in his class better than him. There's no way he's the 43rd ranked wide receiver in the class. There's no way he's the 37th best player in the state of Texas. It just can't be, right? So I just kept watching. I'm like, all right, maybe there's something, there's a hole in his game that 247, ESPN, you know, all these national uh, websites, re recruiting sites, they, they know something I don't, right? So what is it? I was trying to just figure it out, maybe point my finger at something. Well, I'm going through the list. His hands are good. Has pretty great feet for, you know, considering his size for a six, three and a half guy who weighs, by the way, 230 pounds now. So he's gained quite a bit of weight, um, of, of muscle mass, that is just adding to that, that big frame that he's got. But so I'm thinking he's got the hands, quick feet for his size, in and out of breaks very well. He's a fluid athlete, good hips, right? Can high point the ball, strong hands on, you know, on 50, 50 balls. Right. And lastly, but certainly not least, he's strong. He is so incredibly strong. He's one of those guys that he's always been, the biggest, the fastest, the strongest kid on the field. Like he's never not been the best athlete on the field. Like that's what you think when you see this kid. You're like, all right, this this kid's his physical tools, his skill set is is very rare. So why is he ranked so low? Well, really, the only thing I could gather and figure out was that maybe it's just because if there are no other holes elsewhere, maybe he just didn't get the exposure that he needed on a three and seven team his senior year. Maybe that's what it was. You know, a lot of times I know these kids are getting, they're building their resumes at these camps and stuff. So it's it's tough to say. I don't know what impact some of that may, may have had on him. But I think Tom Herman 
kind of understood this. Him and Andre Coleman last year. Yeah, I know Tom Herman is no longer here, obviously, right? But he and Andre Coleman obviously saw something, enough of something in Troy O'Meary to make him the only receiver that they took in that 2020 class inside the top 300. They felt good enough about him being their guy. That their their receiver for that receiver or that recruiting class. And you know, I just I want I, I wanted to give Troy the credit. He I think he deserved the the kid is when you just think about everything we know now about what Steve Sarkeesian can do to just create advantages and mismatches within his offense uh, schematically, and just thinking about what he could potentially do with a guy with Troy's combination of size, speed, and and just freak athleticism in the red zone, right? It just makes me, it, it, I just can't help but get a, extremely excited about that. So, you know, we, we saw he was, or there, there were all the reports were, you know, he was kind of gain, gaining steam, generating hype leading up to the season, going to challenge for playing time at that X receiver position. And here's another thing to consider when you talk about somebody challenging for the, you know, playing time at the X receiver position, the outside receiver, kind of like your go-to guy, not necessarily in Tom Herman's offense, right? We all know kind of how he utilizes that H back there. Like back, you know, we saw it with Devin DuVernay. We saw it with little Jordan Humphrey. The list goes on. But with this kid, you're like, if he's challenging that X receiver position as a freshman, that's Brennan Eagles' spot. Brennan Eagles is on his way to the NFL right now. A lot of a lot of mocks I've seen have him going in the fourth round. So somewhere, you know, mid to early, early to mid day three. So he's probably going to have a pretty good shot at making the roster is essentially what that means. If you go in any later than fourth, fourth or fifth round in today's NFL, you're you're likely getting cut. But, you know, if he's going projected in the fourth round just because of what we've seen with just his size and his speed, right? And, and this kid, this freshman, Troy O'Meary, who was ranked 241st in his recruiting class, he's challenging this NFL receiver for playing time as a freshman. So that to me right there is exciting. That's all I need to know. That's all I need to hear. I just thought it was fascinating that Going back and looking, right? I, I remember being excited watching his his huddle film. Because, I mean, I I remember I remember sitting there thinking, "Holy cow! Like this kid is special, right?" I mean, just it's kind of like what we always do as fans. We always overreact. We you know we pick we pick highlights and 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 we break them down and we say, "Look what he can do here," right? But you know, it's part of it. But for some reason, I just I have a great feeling about this player, and I, I think that very very soon. He's going to start getting the credit he deserves and stop being overlooked. That's all I got.